Right on cue, here comes the flood of is it worth it videos around the newly announced Nintendo Switch Lite. So in this video, I want it to be much more specific because worth is extremely relative. For instance, the Switch Lite is going to be absolutely worthless to my 96 year old grandmother who has absolutely no use for it, no matter the cost. Worth is also different to a millionaire who's going to buy the Switch Lite after he buys a $4,000 bottle of wine. I mean, that dude's socks are probably worth more than the $200 Switch Lite. So worth is all relative. So this video isn't about the Switch Lite's relative worth. This video is about whether or not the Switch Lite is right for you, period. So real quick, I did get into all the specific specs, specific specs, that sounds kind of weird, all the specific specs and my opinions on the new Nintendo Switch Lite in a podcast I did recently, which I will of course link in the description below. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast, by the way, I do it twice a week. Um, I have a lot of fun geeking out on there. I have a lot of guests on, including the 8-bit guy, David Murray, uh, Sam Battle from Look Mum No Computer, uh, James Rolfe, the angry video game nerd I've had on, Austin Evans I've had on. We talked about Audis and stuff like that, driving race cars and things. Uh, who else? George Nori from Coast to Coast AM. Uh, the artist Lights I've had on the show, and we talked about the songwriting process and how to draw comic books and all sorts of things like that. It's a very, very fun show. Basically, just search for Geek Therapy Radio in your favorite podcast app, and I'm sure it'll turn up. I really appreciate your consideration subscribing to the podcast as well. So one of the things I mentioned in that Switch Lite podcast is that the Switch Lite is not a switch anymore. By definition, you're not switching it from anything to anything else. It is strictly designed for portable only operation, and that's where we'll start as to whether or not the Switch Lite is right for you. Like I said, it's portable only. It will not connect to a TV like the vanilla Switch. So it's better to think about the Switch Lite like an old Nintendo handheld, like the Game Boy or the 3DS, and we'll, we'll get into the 3DS more at the end of the video and a little bit of bonus content. So if your main goal with a Nintendo Switch Lite, at least, is to plug it into a TV either at home or on the road in a hotel room, you can't do that with the Nintendo Switch Lite. So if that's very important to you, the Nintendo Switch Lite is not for you. Also, the Switch Lite does not have detachable Joy-Cons or a kickstand. So one of the main selling points of the main original vanilla Nintendo Switch was that you could prop it up on its flimsy, albeit flimsy, kickstand, detach the Joy-Cons, give one to your friend, keep one for yourself, and play a quick game of Smash Brothers or Mario Kart or whatever right there on the table as it's propped up on the kickstand. You can't do that with a Nintendo Switch Lite. Well, not not typically in the way that you can with the original Switch, but more on that in a second. So if the ability to detach the Joy-Cons and give one to your friend and play anywhere on the go is important to you, then the Switch Lite might not be right for you. That said, you can pair Joy-Cons to the Nintendo Switch Lite, just like the original Nintendo Switch. In fact, you can pair all sorts of Bluetooth joysticks and controllers to the Nintendo Switch, whether it's the Lite or the vanilla Nintendo Switch. I actually think that's one of the big pros overall for the Nintendo Switch uh, console, period, is that you can attach all sorts of like 8-bit dough controllers and various other US, not USB, Bluetooth controllers to the Nintendo Switch. That's a good feature, and I don't think a whole ton of people even know about that. However, again, no matter what controllers you pair to the Switch Lite, there's no kickstand, so you'd have to prop it up on a book or something. And even at that, the screen is five and a half inches down from 6.2 inches on the original Switch. So if you do play with paired Joy-Cons to the Nintendo Switch Lite, the screen's small and you'll have to prop it up on something anyways. The picture I'm trying to paint here is to illustrate the individual nature and design of the Nintendo Switch Lite. So if you're okay with the Nintendo Switch Lite being exclusively personal, being exclusively handheld, then I think you would like the Nintendo Switch Lite. I think the Nintendo Switch Lite would be right for you. And this isn't 
a stretch at all. So Nintendo has had these handhelds, these personal handheld video games since before the Game Boy with the Game & Watch series. So if you liked the Game Boy, if you liked your 3DS, if you liked your Nintendo DS, I think you'll love the Nintendo Switch Lite and I think it would be right for you. So that brings me to a critical question I know a lot of you are asking yourself because it's something I ask myself as well. And that is if you already have a Nintendo Switch, is adding a Nintendo Switch Lite right for you or even justifiable? So I can only give my opinion and perspective on this question as somebody who already owns a Nintendo Switch. So take my opinion, it's just an opinion, opinion warning. Take it for what it's worth and for what it means to you. I do want a more ruggedized Nintendo Switch to keep in my backpack and with me almost 100% of the time. The vanilla Switch is definitely portable, don't get me wrong, but to me and probably a lot of other people, it feels brittle. And I guarantee you, the Joy-Con drift issue, a lot of it can be directly attributed to, attributed, <laughs> attributed to carrying the uh, Nintendo Switch around with you in a backpack or bag. Now quickly, for those unaffected or unaware of what the Joy-Con drift issue is, that's where your player or your cursor on the screen continually pulls one direction or doesn't respond to input at all. It'd be like your computer mouse cursor always dragging itself to one side of the screen or not moving at all when you wiggle it around. That's what's happening to the, th to the thumbsticks in a lot of Nintendo Switches, or enough for it to matter. And I guarantee you this is because they're getting damaged in transport. At least a lot of them anyways. So yes, I do personally want a Nintendo Switch Lite to keep with me everywhere if the thumbsticks are more durable and one would only hope that they would be more durable since the Nintendo Switch Lite is designed from the ground up to be portable only. With the vanilla Nintendo Switch, the original Nintendo Switch, I learned to detach my Joy-Cons before I put it in my backpack and keep the Joy-Cons separately in a separate pocket, nice and safe. There's some things to consider there with the vanilla Switch. So the idea of tossing my rugged Nintendo Switch Lite in my backpack or in a bag without a care in the world is very, very appealing to me, and I'm sure others. If I don't have to worry with the Nintendo Switch Lite, that means it's right for me. Another thing to consider is if the Nintendo Switch Lite is right, Lite is right, for your children, and I would wager that it very much is. I actually think the Nintendo Switch Lite will have a huge market with parents buying it for their... Blech. I actually think the Nintendo Switch Lite will have a huge market with parents buying it for their children. I have never once yet seen a niece, a nephew, a friend's kid ever playing a Nintendo Switch on a TV actually in its dock. They're always carrying it from room to room and plopping it on a table and plopping it on the ground, so I think a more rugged, $100 cheaper version of the Nintendo Switch, aka the Nintendo Switch Lite, will fit this bill perfectly. You know, the other thing is mommy and daddy want to use the TV to Netflix and chill, so they hand the switch to their kids so that they can... Why don't you want them to go to bed for... Let's move on. So without delving into too much detail like I've already done in my podcast or that you may have heard elsewhere here on YouTube, there are some other lesser considerations to think about when you're deciding whether the Nintendo Switch Lite is right for you or not. The Nintendo Switch Lite doesn't have HD rumble in the controls and there are no IR cameras that interact with some games. So are those two minor things important to you? I doubt they're a deal breaker for most people. But like I've mentioned before, with the Nintendo Switch Lite, you can still pair Joy-Cons to it that do have the HD rumble and that do have the IR camera in it. You would just have to prop the Nintendo Switch Lite up on a book or something since, again, it doesn't have a kickstand. By the way, the kickstand on the original Nintendo Switch, that's just a that's just an SD card cover. I don't even call it a kickstand. It's just a cover for your SD card. Seriously sucks. Yes, it holds up your Switch, but let, anyways, move on. NFC or near field communication is still available on the Nintendo Switch Lite in case you have any Amiibos or you use Amiibos. So I'll start wrapping this up with one of the last things to consider, especially if you already own a Nintendo Switch. Nintendo has eased account restrictions on the Nintendo Switch, so, it's still a pain in the butt, but it's much better than it was 
if you had two 3DSs, for instance. If you buy the Nintendo Switch Lite and you have a Nintendo Switch, you can use the same one Nintendo account on both devices. You can still download software you've already purchased onto both Switches. However, to play that software or use that software on your secondary device, you must have an active internet connection. But I think this is a very, very, very important uh, point to make, and I think it should be mentioned everywhere in every review of the Nintendo Switch Lite, as far as a buying guide goes. That means if you go out camping in the boonies and you take your Nintendo Switch Lite, and that's your secondary device according to your Nintendo account, you can't play those digital downloads without an internet connection. So let's say you do have an internet connection and you are playing your second copy of Mario Kart 8 or whatever and then the Wi-Fi router goes down or something like that. Your game will still play, according to Nintendo, will still play for a few minutes and then it'll pause. When it pauses, it'll pick right back up from where you left off once the internet connection is re-established. So if you are going on that camping trip in the boonies and you know you won't have any internet connection and you want to take your Nintendo Switch Lite, make sure that you go into your Nintendo account settings while you are in an internet connection and designate your Nintendo Switch Lite as your primary device. All of that said, the physical cartridges aren't subject to any of this. Just without an internet connection, that will start to interfere with your cloud saves and stuff like that. So yes, it's all a pain in the butt, but it's way better than Nintendo accounts were between 3DSs. So I'll leave whether or not the Nintendo Switch Lite is right for you with this final point before we get into the 3DS is dead bonus content. The biggest factor in whether or not the Nintendo Switch Lite is right for you boils down to your interest in the Nintendo Switch, period. So if you are on the fence about whether or not you want to get a Nintendo Switch, the Nintendo Switch Lite could be right for you because it's a $100 cheaper cost of entry to start dipping your toes in the water. So Nintendo is able to track with the uh, original vanilla Nintendo Switch how many people actually use it docked connected to a TV versus portable mode. And it turns out most people use the Switch most of the time in portable mode. This is one reason why they even introduced the Nintendo Switch Lite. I myself only play the Nintendo Switch on the big screen TV sparingly. Most of the time it sits next to my bed stand to play in bed or play on the toilet. Yeah, I said it! So in my opinion, I think the Nintendo Switch Lite will be right for most people. Okay, curtains back up. Let's briefly talk about the fate of the 3DS in this bonus content. Bonus content is just a longer video. Let's not beat around the bush. You may have seen or heard a lot of clickbait that the 3DS is dead because the Nintendo Switch Lite is replacing it. The 3DS is not dead and Nintendo says they have no plans to abandon the platform as long as there's still demand for it. Nintendo does say, however, that they have no plans to release any more first-party games like Nintendo or Zelda or anything like that for it, but it's still open to third-party developers, and the eShop will still be supported as well as online multiplayer. So your Smash Brothers, you're fine. Now yes, naturally demand for the 3DS platform has fallen off sharply since the Nintendo Switch came out, but there is still revenue being generated on the order of hundreds of millions of dollars in the 3DS platform. All right, I'm going to read this here because there's a lot of information. I'll probably put up a graphic or something like that. Um, according to the latest information, Nintendo has sold over 2.5 million units of the 3DS platform hardware in March of 2019. Now, of course, this is mostly 2DSs and over 13.2 million units of software. So even assuming conservatively that those were only the $80 2DSs and each software title was only five bucks. As you know on the eShop, software titles can range from 70 cents or whatever all the way up to, I've seen titles for $100. Uh, Nintendo still sells games for $60, $40, $30, $20. $20. So assuming that each title's five dollars, that's super conservative. That's over $200 million in hardware and $66 million in software. That's $266 million. Again, this is a conservative estimate. In other words, the 3DS platform is nowhere near its prime, but it is still generating money for Nintendo. So even using those conservative estimates, Nintendo is not going to cut off the flow of life-giving water 
even if that flow has reduced, if that makes sense. They will get every last drip out of the 3DS platform as long as it's still profitable. The only time they'll shut it down is when the 3DS platform stops being profitable. So even by simple economics, the 3DS is not dead and it's not going anywhere anytime relatively soon, at least not in 2019. So take all the clickbait with a grain of salt. The 3DS will age gracefully and then eventually die a hero. All right, thanks for sticking around. It really was a joy having you. I would be truly honored if you consider subscribing to this YouTube channel and my Geek Therapy Radio podcast. I really do mean that from the bottom of my heart. So if you liked it, tell your friends. But most of all, be good to yourself and others. Embrace your inner geek, and I'll see you next time.